What's up, everyone? I'm Naivo. Today we have the Hi-Fi Man Sesfaro, which is a flagship planar magnetic from Hi-Fi Man. And the MSRP is $6,000, but you can probably find it cheaper if you just ask the dealers. Um, they might be able to knock the price down for you. Um, so it is the overall best headphone that I've heard, and I do recommend it under certain conditions. So... Um, those conditions are that you have to have the right DAC and amp for it. If you underpower it, there's no way that this headphone's going to sound good. Um, there's three variations of the headphone. I have the 3.5 millimeter. There's also a 2.5 and another 2.5. And th these are the headphone jacks at the bottom. Um, uh, the other 2.5 has a different type of metal. It's, I think it's like a brushed aluminum or something. I don't know. I've only heard the 3.5, I think. I'm not sure what the other one was that I heard. I didn't hear any sound differences on the two. They both sound the same to me. Um, so, yeah, it is a very chain-picky and power-hungry headphone. A lot of people recommend Sesfara with speaker amplifiers. Um, I've heard it on my Kenwood L08M, which actually I think was not good enough for Sesfara. Um, but the speaker amp that most people usually recommend Sesfara with is the benchmark AHB2. It's AHB2. And um, I did hear it on that chain was with the Hollow May. And so Hollow May, AHB2, and Sesfara was the best overall headphone that I've heard. Um, I normally listen on the 430HA because that's my main headphone amplifier. But I have to admit that the AHB2 was quite a bit better than the 430HA in this case um, for Sesfara. I think for other things, AHB2 is not very good. But if you have Sesfara, you should strong. I would strongly recommend trying out a AHB2 just for Sesfara. Um, if you try it, if you try Sesfara on weaker headphone amplifiers like THX 789 or um, SA1 or Jotunheim 2 or IHA 6 or any of the tube amp like so as far is not going to sound good so just don't even try that if you can't afford the higher end amplifiers just don't get so far because it's not going to sound good um, so I'd say Anyone that says they don't like Sesfara, it's most likely because they heard it on a headphone amp that is not really powering it correctly. And like I could get I could get uh, Sesfara to 95 decibels on a VO BTR7, but it's still way underpowered. So just because you can get it loud enough does not mean it's powered correctly. And when something is powered correctly on Sesfara, you know, you'll know it. it. It sounds really good, and the stage is great and everything. Um, on the IHA 6, you, the, there's a resonance on the um, headphone of Sesfara, and you can really hear it for whatever reason on the IHA 6. It's pretty strong and annoying. Um, but on the other two amplifiers, I can barely hear the ringing at all, so it's... I don't know why that happens, but it just does. Um, the build the build quality of Sesfara is perhaps one of the weak points. The where the head strap connects to the headphone, I think, is the weakest point, and I've seen several people have um, failures there. Um, you do get a lifetime warranty with Sesfara, so Hi-Fi Man will either send you a new headphone strap or. Uh, if you send in the whole headphone, they'll do it for you to um, so that you don't have to fix it yourself. But of course, that takes time, and you know, some people don't like dealing with that, and that's understandable when you're paying this, you know, this kind of price for a headphone. But um, the other thing is the headphone cable that it comes with is a really, really cheap one, and it's kind of a joke for how much this headphone costs. But I think it's uh, I think it just doesn't really matter because. I think most people in this price range will already want a custom headphone cable anyway, so who cares? I don't know. It's not, not a big deal to me. I'd, I've never even used the stock one, so <laughs> that's just how I see it. All right, so um, other than that, the build quality is pretty nice. No real big issues. So the cable and where the head strap meets the, um, the 
headphone chassis, I guess, is the weak point. Uh, sound quality wise, it's, it's like I said, the best overall. So, um, if you can imagine for the stage, like an astronaut's helmet or one of those old school scuba divers helmets, um, the stage is kind of like that where it's away from your face in this bubble like shape. And, um, it kind of, it doesn't go completely around your head. Well, it actually did for me on the L08M speaker amp from Kenwood, but um, usually that that doesn't happen. So, what it it kind of sounds like it goes up and down and all around your head and past your shoulders about twenty degrees is how it sounds for me, um, usually. So if it's not staging at all, then you're way underpowered for sure. Um, I think a lot of people would describe the stage as uh, sounding very grand. So that's that's how Pokey described it to me, and I'll have to agree with Pokey when I you know when I heard him say it that way. It's like, yep, that makes sense. It does sound grand. So um, I guess it's one of those things you have to hear it to really know what that means. But it it's just like a nice full sound, and you're just enveloped in the music and. It's like the performance is for you. That's kind of how it feels. Um, the What else with the sound quality? So the bass is kind of what sets it apart from other high-end headphones. I think at this level, you're competing with a lot of E-stats. And it's, you know, it's in, my, in my mind, it's it's already much better than Utopia. It's not, it's another level above that. So you're competing with the E-stats. And the, the big problem with these stats is they don't have bass. Well, Sesfara has bass, so and it has pretty good bass. The the bass is pretty clean and it has a little bit of punch. Not as much as HE one thousand, but it's cleaner than HE one thousand. Um, not as clean as the E stats, but it has that punch. And it also does a trick that I don't think I've heard on any other headphone. Uh, well, I've heard it on one, but it was like a cheap gaming headset. But it does um, left to right imaging with the bass. So, you know, the the rest of the frequency does a, a full 360 up and down type stage, and the bass is going left to right. It's kind of pretty cool, actually. Um, so as far as stage goes, it is the type of stage that I like, which is a co- cohesive type of stage. And in my Dan Clark Audio, a.k.a. Mr. Speaker's Voce video, I mentioned that the Voce on the BHSE so far to date was the best cohesive stage that I've heard. So Voce is beating um, Sesfara for the stage, and I, it's it's much better, actually. The Voce is really beating Sesfara. Now, Shangri-La also has a really impressive stage, and I heard that on um, a 3ES Elite with the Dave plus M scaler. The stage is also very impressive on that. However, it's not the type of stage that I normally like, which is a cohesive stage. This one is more of a, I I like to call it star shaped where it goes. um, It it just doesn't, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, um, if you stick your arm out, the sounds are on, you know, it'll be in that, that angle and it doesn't it doesn't go all around it's only going at like one angle at a time for each sound similar to sr009s and probably sr09 also um, that's the type of stage that ching has um, but when i heard shang the level of detail is so much better than sasfara that i i was like so impressed with it that i think i might want to go out and buy a shang senior Right before that, I heard the SR09S, and I liked that. And I was like, okay, I, I want to get, um, I want to keep my Sesfara and get the um, SR09S too. And then I heard Shang, and I was like, oh, this is a whole nother level higher than Sesfara. I don't think I even want Sesfara. So I actually recently sold Sesfara. I'm considering the, getting the Shang Senior. But I want to try out uh, a Perio before I decide, so... Um, that might be a while before I get to hear one, so I'll I'll decide later on. Um, 
so yeah, we talked about some of the flaws already in Chang. Um, as far as the wow factor goes for Sesfara, it's only going to happen on the really good chains. And um, it's, I don't know, the wow factor, it's definitely there. Like if you listen to um, a low end headphone for a while and then you go back to Sesfara, it, it does shock you every time about how much better it is than the other headphones. But if you only wear Sesfara, your brain will get used to it and then that wow factor will go away. Um, Using it for gaming, it's a straight up cheat code. It, it you hear everything, and it's not even fair, really. It's you can hear up and down and left and right, everything. Um, it's one of the best I've heard for gaming. Um, so yeah, re recommendation wise, yeah, I do recommend it, and um, but only if you can afford it with a good DAC and a really good amp. Um, so I think my 430 HA on the used markets around like 2200, which is not too bad, but I would, you know, if you have Sisfara, I would say, and you're not planning on getting a lot of other headphones, I would say the best pairing, um, is AHB2, which I think, I think those are around, I don't know, 2700 or somewhere around there on the used market. So, um, yeah, I do recommend it. And anyone that says that Sisfara sucks, well, they probably just didn't hear it on the right chain. So they'll change their mind probably when they hear it on the right chain. But a lot of those same people that um, say that it sucks, they're the same people that will not, they refuse to listen to it on the chains that make Sisfara sound good for whatever reason. And you can ask them about that. <laughs> I, I don't care... Uh, how I get the good sound. I just want the good sound. And if it, if it means combining two things that are flawed, such as, as far as resonance and a headphone amp, that's not a perfect class a or whatever. So be it. I, I just want the good sound. So I don't really care how I get there. Um, so that's just how I feel about it. Um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. And I, like I said, I did just sell Sisfara, so I'm still on the fence of what I want to buy next. But I've had Sisfara for like two, a little over two years now. Um, so I, you know, it's grained in my brain. All right, see you guys later. Oh, I wanted to mention one more really odd thing about Sisfara that not only I have noticed, but other Sisfara users have noticed too is when listening to someone on a cheap microphone through Sisfara, for whatever reason, it sounds like their microphone got a huge upgrade. And it doesn't make any sense at all, but um, quite a few of us have noticed that. So if you, got, <laughs> if you have a friend with a cheap, really cheap, you know, gamer headset, for some reason they sound clear on Sisfara. I don't know, weird fact. I just wanted to add that to the, uh, to the video. All right, see you guys later.